Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Call Me Crafty Owl here on the Cat Scrappiness channel with a fun new project to share with you. In today's video, I'll be using some of the newest Cat Scrappiness goodies to create a shaker Christmas tag. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to create it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the Cat Scrappiness YouTube channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. There is a whole team of artists who share their creations here, and I know that you're going to love to stop back by. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. I don't know about you, but I love a good shaker. And with the holidays coming up and maybe needing some gift tags, I thought today we would create a shaker gift tag that might actually serve a second purpose once the gift has been received. In front of me here are the main supplies that I'm going to be using. If I do add anything later on in the video, I'll be sure to let you know. But if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's go ahead and take a look at those products and then we'll get started. Over on the left is the Reverse Scallop with Hello Mini Slimline Die Set. I will be using the middle frame from this, and I chose one piece of paper from the Ugly Sweater Slimline Paper Pad. For my stamps today, I'm going to be using a Kuwaka add-on set. You might already recognize my furry friends here, the Kawakas from other cat scrappiness videos and blog posts. But instead of using these cute little guys and dressing them up with the costumes, I'm going to be using this tree here and maybe one or two of the little packages. I also got out the coordinating die set because I'll want to cut those out. And for my shaker bits, I'm going to be using the Glistening Tinsel Sequin Mix. It's just got some great red, green, silvers, there's stars, there's sequins, perfect for the occasion. Now it's kind of hard to see, but I do have two pieces of the mini slimline acetate sheets, which are three and a quarter by five and three quarters. I will cut these down a little bit later, but it's a great size to get me started. Let's get crafty. I started out by cutting two of the scallop frames from that single piece of pattern paper. And you'll see that after cutting those, I was left with quite a few scraps that I can use for a project later. Next, I brought in those two acetate sheets and I cut them down so they would pretty much fill the back of each of those frames. So I cut these at two and a half inches wide by four and seven eighths inches tall. Then I brought in my art glitter glue and put a fine line on the back of each of the frames before placing my acetate sheets carefully onto this. Now because this glue does dry clear, if a little smushes out onto the front, it's not the end of the world. I did try to be careful, but once I had both of those pieces glued on, I set these frames to the side to dry while I continued to work on the rest of the tag. Since I will be coloring my images with alcohol markers, I am going to be using Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp the Christmas tree and the two presents. The cardstock I chose is a little bit of an off-white just because the background of my pattern paper is not a true bright white. Once I picked up the stamps with the door of my Misty, I did run my fingers over each of them just because these stamps are brand new and I find that this helps them take the ink better. But I am using my stamp positioner because I do want to ink this up and stamp it twice just to get a nice solid black to color in. 
I chose three markers to color my images today. I'll be using yellow, red, and green. And I did start out with the lightest color, the yellow. And I colored in the star and the tree, and then a bow and a package. Once I had the yellow done, I brought in my green marker and started coloring in the tree. Since the area of the tree is a little bit larger, the shading on this is easier to see. Now to make sure when I was doing my blending that my ink would stay wet so I could get a nice blend, I colored small sections at a time. While I keep working on my project, I wanted to stop by and give you a heads up about a special little gift bag you'll receive in your cat scrappiness order between now and December 25th, 2021. This little drawstring bag is full of goodies for you. Inside you'll have a little tasty treat, some sprinkles, a cat scrappiness post-it notepad, and this special scratcher ticket. When you get yours, make sure to scratch it off to uncover your discount, and it is valid through February 14th, 2022. Now back to the video. After I colored the tree in, I brought in the red marker, and I started by dotting each of the lights on the Christmas tree with the dark part of the marker. Then, using the same shading process, I colored in the present and the bow on the two gifts. Then, I took those off camera to die cut them out, and while I was there, I also die cut a copy from the same off-white cardstock, so when I put this on the clear acetate later, you don't see the backs of the colored pieces. My frames had now had plenty of time to dry, so it's time to start putting this shaker gift tag together. You'll notice here that off camera, I did go ahead and put some foam tape on the back of one of the frames. This will actually be the back side of the gift tag. I spent a little bit of time figuring out where I wanted my tree and my presents to go on the front of the tag, and once I had a good layout for those, I brought back in my art glitter glue and adhered these to the front of the tag. I set this aside for about 5 minutes to dry completely before moving on. Off camera, after that piece had dried, I did go ahead and put some more foam tape on the back. I put this here so when I put the shaker bits into the shaker, they don't fall behind the tree. Now right now, that does still fit in the foam tape for the back of my shaker, but you'll see here that once I put the backers onto the Christmas tree, I do have to trim some off just to make it fit because the bottom's hung over just a little bit. You want to make sure that you get a nice seal between the front of the tag and the back so none of your shaker bits fall out. Since this is a gift tag and you might want to hang it off of a present, I brought in some red and white twine that I had from my stash, kind of figured out how big a loop I wanted at the top, and then tied a knot. Now to hold this in place, I brought in a glue dot and I placed it top center on the front of that frame. Now, I didn't want to trust this because that glue dot might not hold it in place for very long, so I brought in my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher and I put a staple right below the knot. I'm hoping that this will be a nice reinforcement for it. After I had that stapled, I brought in my scissors and just cut the tails on that twine. Next, I brought in my cat scrappiness embellishment box. You'll see here that their pearl mixes and their sprinkles and their sequin mixes fit great in these little containers. As I mentioned before, I chose the glistening tinsel sequin mix and I poured some of that out into my embellishment tray. Before I put these onto the top of the acetate, I did pull off three sides of the foam tape release paper. That way it's just less later that I have to pull off and kind of shake around my sequins inside. 
For now, I'm just going to gently spoon these onto that acetate and I want to keep it toward the top of the shaker just so when I go to put on the front later, it doesn't get stuck behind that tree. When you go to put the two sides together, you will want to take this pretty slow. I unfortunately rushed it toward the end and had to do a little readjusting. Now at this point, we are missing something on our gift tag, somewhere to write the name. So I went off camera and I cut one more of those trees. This got placed on the back of the back side, and now once it is dry, there is a place for us to write the recipient's name. Not only is this a cute little gift tag, but once it has been received, it can now be used as a bookmark. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this holiday shaker gift tag. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. And until our next video, we hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.